to get them. Two steps and hot steps and shiny pen never. Blackberry baby, you are my honey. Blackberry baby, the size of my name. So babe, I got to be right there with you with me. Blackberry baby, you're mine. Baby, baby, you're mine. Baby, you're mine. Baby, you're mine. of what it takes. I can give her a big break. Mason, I can't figure what your objection is. My objection is that it would ruin the lives of two fine young people. Look, Mason, how much do you pay that whole troop? A $1,500 a week guarantee? Surely not more. Six months from now, she can make that much by herself. You're just a sentimental old fool. Maybe so. But I've watched those kids grow up on this circuit. You gave up a promising stage career to push Ethel ahead. Oh, he's done a fine job of it, too. Next season, she'll be the biggest attraction we have. Out here on the sticks, what'll it get her? for the big time. That applause. Come on, you two lovebirds, out of the way. Yes, sir, Mr. Stage Manager. All right, girls, in your place. Let's go. Don't rip him, dude. He's right. And I have to make a change. And I have to see Mr. Mason.
Marshall is a talent scout for an Eastern circuit. He thinks Ethel has big time possibilities. Oh boy, that's great. I've been waiting a lifetime to hear news like that. I knew it would come sometime. When would you want us to report, Mr. Marshall? Us? What do you mean, us? You see, Duke, Mr. Marshall wasn't figuring on you. He wants Ethel to do a single. A single? Alone? The Bronze Nightingale. What an angle. Sensational. What publicity. My kind of a build-up, and she's in the bag. You can tag along if you want to. Tag along? I don't think you understand, Mr. Marshall. We've always been together. Always hoped to be. I studied Ethel. Taught her. Brought out the best in her. It would be a great chance for her. Chance? Why, it's the break of a lifetime. What's the talent getting her here? I know all that, but I produced her show. Producers are a dime a dozen in New York. Well, I wouldn't be the first one to crash in. Why, I've heard a lot of fairy tales. Ever been to New York? No. Then I'll tell you what it would be like. In and out of offices. Nothing today. Come back tomorrow. Just butting your head up against a stone wall. It would break your heart and hers. You wouldn't want to stand in her way, would you? Stand in her way? Of course not. New York is her dish. Think of her in life. Ethel Andrews. The Browns Nightingale. A new star is born. Gaiety. Glamour. She's entitled to that. And I can get them all for her. What can you do? The, uh... The show just broke, gentlemen. Good night. for the opening night. Isn't she beautiful? You can see things. Why, she's a whole show. Come on, it's late. Let's go. Card. Ain't Duke a prince? Ella, the Duke is top. He's giving me a chance to do a number next week, and I sure have been rehearsing hard. You've been holding out on me, huh? You know better than that. Well, come on, let's see it. Well, here goes. Ella? Ella, I want to speak to Ethel. I'm practically gone. Duke, darling, what's the matter? Oh, I guess I've been kind of selfish. Keeping you on this small-time stuff when you belong on Broadway. Dear, you'll be a dreamer all your life, and I wouldn't have you different. But don't you know that if Broadway is for us, we'll get there? Marshall, a talent scout for an Eastern booking circuit, has been watching you. He thinks you've got what it takes. Ethel, we show people live and strive for one goal, the big stem. And when opportunity knocks, we've got to answer. It's your chance, kid. Take it. Without you, do Don't say it, honey. I'll never tell you anything that isn't right. Because, well, you remember. Mason? Well, Duke, you broke the season's house records. That's fine. How about Ethel? Have you made up your mind yet? 
Sure, but she hasn't made up her. I've been arguing with her for the past two weeks. She just laughs at the idea of our splitting. Says it's ridiculous. Sometimes the surgeon has to cut deep and hurt. But it's for the patient's good. The Franz Nightingale. A new star is born. Publicity. Glamour. Gayest. Sometimes the surgeon has to cut deep and hurt, but it's for the patient's good. Well, two weeks. I'm so glad for Duke's sake. Yes, Duke, come on in. We've just about finished packing. I'm so glad you've given up that silly idea of our separating. Why, I just couldn't stand it. You couldn't stand it. Suppose you think of me for a change. Remember that? Oh, contrary. Now, listen, Ethel. I've tried to reason with you for the past two weeks. Tried to be kind. But you wouldn't listen. Now, I'll tell you something. I can make myself a piece of money out of that. Here, take a look. $5,000. Sure, I can cash in on this contract, and I need the dough. Oh, that's all I mean to you. Dollars and cents. I don't think I ever knew you until now. Well, that's on me, I guess. Here, you forget my part of the contract. Now you can collect. Well, I'm glad you decided to be sensible. I'll be seeing you sometime. Lots of luck. And she never knew me until now. You're a great guy. But I'm not going to let you get away with this. It's the best thing for her, Al. Best thing? I'm going right back and tell her the truth. Listen, Ella. You've got to promise not to say a word. Because, well, you remember.
What? Hold the wire. Come in. Where do you go next week? Say, you pay the last half of this one at Athens, and that's a season's work these days. Where do we go next week? Yes? Good morning, Mr. Lake. Uh, remember me? I'm Duke Davis. I used to do a single for you. So did a lot of other hams. No, I don't remember you. It has been a long time. But say, I've got a brand new act. Oh, sure, I know. New gags, classy songs, swell wardrobe. I hear that every day. I know it by heart. It's got whiskers on it. Nothing for you. I guess you heard that before. Anyway, in case you don't know it, Waterville's as dead as the last year's woman pet. But all I'm looking for is girl acts for the picture houses. Well, that's great, Mr. Lake. You know, I'm a producer, and, and that would be right up my alley. And the alley's so full of producers, the health department's kicking. Say, I do remember you. You and that Andrews dame. She was a good meal ticket for you once. Ought to be a better one now. She's a big-time hit. I don't have to hang a touch on her. I'm thinking of doing the same to you, my love. There you are, Mr. Mason. A brand new show. I just finished writing it. I hope you've got something here, my boy. It's a wow. It's got everything. Heard from Ethel? No. But look, I can use my old people. They know my work, and I know what they can do. Of course, you'll have to stake me. I'm broke. If you're as good as you used to be, will you manage to put on your show? It'll be all the day, 10 o'clock in the morning. Wait a minute. And that don't mean 10.30 or 5 after. It means 10. All right, little puss. How's it shaping up to you, Sam? It's a lily. But, Duke, you always put on good shows. I hope so. <laughs> I know. The show did a nosedive. Breaks of our game, my boy. But I know where it's weak. Say, a couple of new specialties and tighten up on that comedy. Why, well, I can doctor up this show in two shakes of a pawnbroker's head. I'm sorry, Duke, but my bankroll just can't stand any more strain. Well, that's that. Anyway, thanks for giving me a break. I'm sorry. Sorry for the flop. Forget it, Duke. What did the boss say? Ah, oh, Duke. We'll show him. This ain't the only second. No, Sam. Get yourself a job. You can handle a stage better than any man I know. I ain't gonna leave you. Yes, you are. Because I can't pay you. 
Here. I'm splitting the bankroll with you. Good luck, Sam. I live and breathe and goggle my tonsils. Duke Davis. Dr. Durando, the old boy himself. How are you? Riding the crest. Favored by fame and followed by fortune. And how is the bright star of the theatrical firmament? The scintillating, shimmering satellite to favor, Doc. What are you peddling these the days? Peddling? A vile word, my boy. I am engaged in revealing to suffering humanity this peerless remedy, this amazing healer. Dr. Durando's universal elixir. That's fine. Sit down. How's business? Ah, marvelous, stupendous, colossal. I might even add that business is uh, fair. Ham and eggs. Turn my eggs over, please. <coughs> Miss. Nothing doing, mister. This is no drugstore. You stuck us for plenty already. Money talks from now on. Art of ham and eggs, over. Uh, Duke, how about making that order double? Sure. Uh, uh, duplicate the order, young woman, and keep my eggs honest, looking me in the face. Another order, ham man. Sunny up. Finished, Doc? Alas, yes. Perhaps you will accept a slight return for your hospitality. That's all right, Doc. You know you're welcome. Come clean now. Up against it? Well, now, I, I am suffering a temporary setback. But uh, come over to my headquarters, and we will discuss matters at length. Oh, well. Have you the time? <laughs> I understand. Come on, Doc. <laughs> uh, no, Duke, I haven't been north of Alabama in two or three years. That's why I haven't seen you before, Doc. Oh, Duke, I want you to meet uh, Prince uh, Alagazoo, my faithful companion. Tippy Dodge. Hiya. Yes, sir, Mr. Davis. How are you? Oh, so you know the Prince. Tippy was property man on one of the Toby shows I was with. Yes, sir. I had a job in them days. Excuse me, Doc, or uh, when does I eat? Oh, it doesn't. Tush, tush, my boy. Always thinking of your stomach. Yes, sir. Thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Step right inside, that Duke. Step right in. Thanks, Doc. Uh, here. Here's 15 cents. Here. Go and get yourself a good meal. Say, Doc, uh, you didn't rob a bank, did you? Uh, run along, boy. You annoy me. I wish to speak with Mr. Davis. Make yourself comfortable, Duke. Thanks, Doc. I was just looking things over. Mm. 
<laughs> Nothing like having a place of your own, is it? Ah, home sweet home. <laughs> Sit down, Duke. Sit down. Oh, get thee from behind me, Satan. <laughs> As you have doubtlessly observed, uh, financial stringency does exist. In fact, I'm disposing of the remnants of my stock to keep this uh, inner man alive. So you're broke? Well, no, no, not exactly. Only a very, very small matter separates me from a cool million. <laughs> yeah? What is that? Uh, Fifteen dollars. Listen, Doc, cut out the act. Give me the lowdown. What's put you behind the eight ball? Well, now, the wholesale house has cut off my credit, and business... Has been rotten. Mm, exactly. The suckers, uh, that is, the customers, uh, don't fall like they used to. Uh-huh. Still giving them that same old spiel and expect them to form a line with their money in their hand. Well, now, I guess that's about it. But uh, it's a good spiel. It always was. That's out now. What you've got to do is entertain them. Give them something for nothing. Oh, uh, no, 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 Duke. That's against all my principles. But, uh, elucidate. What you need is showmanship. And that means Duke Davis. I'll bring your show up to the minute. How about it? Son, we're partners. Fifty-fifty. Ah, uh, this speaks of brighter and better days for old Doc Durando. First of all, I talk about the customers. Forget the medicine. Something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce the return of famous Dr. Durando to your thriving community. He brings you the benefits of a lifelong dedication to the study of the alleviation of human suffering. The doctor's happiness, naturally, is your happiness. Isn't that so, doctor? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. To be sure. But, my friends, in order to be happy, you must be healthy. Ain't that the truth? Mister, I've got a powerful misery in my left shoulder. Oh, a very serious condition. But the doctor's universal elixir will make you a healthy man. Have no fear. Step right this way. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> Before I tell you of this wonderful discovery, this universal elixir, let us have music. Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Duckbill, Wizard of the Strings, will now entertain. Strike it up, Professor. <laughs> See what I can do about it, Lodge. He's paid his license. That's so. But, Sheriff, I ain't gonna put any pressure on you. But just remember, it ain't part of election. That's all. He's fixed. Very well, Your Highness. The Prince hopes that you will all get what is coming to you. Oh, I sure hope we don't get what's coming to us. Have no fear. There'll be plenty for all. And now let me tell you of this wonderful elixir, compounded of rare herbs gathered from the ends of the earth. From the icy wastes of the polar regions, the blazing heat of the Sahara Desert, regardless of cause, a pack of lies. I don't believe a word. Come on, Sheriff. I'll show them. Those are strong words, sir. Are you prepared to back them up? I sure am. As a respectable druggist, I... I... Ah, 
just as I thought. Friends, this man sells you a bottle of medicine, charges you a dollar. Maybe he cures you, and maybe he doesn't. It ain't so. I know this stuff ain't no good. You hold your lip, lied Smithers. I drunk two bottles of your medicine for my sciatic, and I'm painting yet. That wasn't for drinking. It was for rubbing. <laughs> Thank you, lady, thank you. But need I go on? I see you get my point. There is no guarantee that what this man sells you and takes your good money for will cure your ailments. Now then, if you are suffering from sciatica, cold in the head, headache, or any other of the ailments that might come to plague you, just see what one bottle, one bottle, mind you, of Dr. Durando's marvelous universal elixir will do for you. Hold on a minute. Will that there stuff grow hair? Grow hair, sir? I'm glad you brought that up. I asked you to look at the good doctor and notice that luxuriant growth of hair. Why, four years ago, the doctor fell ill with synphalitosis of the metatarsal, a very dangerous disease, and all of his hair fell out. But thanks to the universal elixir, but why go on? Why go on, doctor? Show them what universal elixir has done for you. It's a fake. Now, Sheriff, do your duty. I'll give you just five minutes to be one mile out of town. Oh, my. A doctor, we're leaving. So I anticipated. Uh, Joe, Joe! Yeah, move those chairs. Start, start back. Uh, uh, Dippy, hook up the car. Looks like old man Jenks is with me permanent. Don't let a little thing like that get you. Why, when I really bear down, we'll be selling more stuff than any medicine show in the business. No. Look, it ain't no use. Forget it, Doc. I've got more ideas than the clock has ticked. And the first idea is, in the future, we're going to glue that wig on. Tight. Oh. For Pete's sake. Hayden. Imp of darkness and demon of this test. <laughs> Smells like the coffee's ready. Now for the eat. Hey, Joe, here's a good spot to turn off the main drag. Cause them folks back there show hostile. Looks kind of rough to me. Yes, but I ain't taking no chances. Okay by me. Let's get out of here. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Some christening, Doc. Through fire and water. We can't fail now. 
and Broadway will more than like her. She'll wow them at your century club. Bring her up to my office in the morning. if you'd mind stepping down a little bit closer. So I won't have to. Not too close, lady. The kerosene from the lamp is leaking and is liable to get on your clothes. Friends, I'm here to introduce Dr. Durando's universal elixir. The average adult, by adult I mean a person who has stopped growing at both ends and started in the middle. <laughs> the minute a man like that gets sick, he runs to a doctor. And the doctor tells him, which reminds me, I had a patient come to me, a little fellow with a glass eye. He didn't tell me it was a glass eye, of course. It uh, happened to come out during the conversation. <laughs> Maybe it's gone. Aha, you see it. He didn't. Anyway, this man went to another doctor, a foreigner, an alienist. This doctor told him, you are not going to get well. But to make sure you're not going to get well, I will call in another doctor. Now, the other doctor told him that he was threatened with paralysis. <laughs> Why do you laugh, brother? Don't you realize it's an awful thing to be paralyzed? It sure is. You feel so rotten in the morning. <laughs> I don't know you, my friend, but I think you show poor taste to laugh at so serious a subject. Anyway, this man finally came to us, and Dr. Durando, whom I shall introduce presently, diagnosed his case of stomach trouble. Friends, do you realize that the death rate on stomach trouble a year averages one death per person? <laughs> ah, you may laugh, but that's a fact. Dr. Durando put this man on a milk diet, 
until he was strong enough to take his medicine. And that man would be alive today if he hadn't uh, died. Oh, no, my friend. If he hadn't held out the Saturday night's paycheck on his wife. <laughs> now, before I go on with my talk, I have a treat for you. I should like to introduce the Durando and Davis world-famous quartet. The Cats and the Fiddle. Come along and swing it for them, boys. That's it. He's the best and most and chap and chap would take his bottle and dab. But if he's still the last way, he smoked that killing jazz. It would make you very tall. It seems that if you've gone too far, not so. I'll be that killing jack. You will think you know yourself, but baby, you start living. You can't stop. Then you don't give a fuck. You said, man, not bad, man. Everything will seem so funny. Stop till things will seem so sunny. Yes, we men can understand. But just smoke that killing jack. pleasure to introduce Dr. Durando, the discoverer of Universal Elixir, himself in person, Dr. Durando. <laughs> yes, it's a man that has done more for mankind with his Universal Elixir than all the doctors in the world put together. What he has done to others, he can do to you. The doctor will sit by my side to verify any and all statements that I may make. Is that so, doctor? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Friends, as I look over your smiling faces, the thought comes to me that a lot of those smiles may be covering up sickness and suffering. Maybe some of you are suffering with rheumatism. Here are some copper neutralizing rings, guaranteed. You do guarantee them, don't you, Doctor? Oh, yes, indeed. Guaranteed to keep away rheumatism. Just think, friends, we are giving away free these marvelous manifestations of modern science. And here, here are some chestnuts. All the way from the land of the East Indies, the land of mystic and magic. Put one of these in your hip pocket, and you'll never be bothered with sciatica. Mister, I haven't got a hip pocket. <laughs> A healthy lady like you will never be bothered with sciatica. <laughs> and these chestnuts, too, are free. With every bottle of Dr. Durando's Universal Elixir at $1 a bottle. Neighbors, we only have a limited supply. You won't all be able to get a bottle. We haven't got them. Ouch! My corn! Give a bottle to the lady with the corns. I said give. It's free to you, madam. Now, I tell you what I'm going to do. When I ring this bell, the sale will start. When I ring it again, the sale will stop. Not another bottle 
will be sold. All right, folks, have your dollars ready. All right, here you are. Here's your neutralizer in the East Indian Chestnut. Take your time now, folks. Take your time. Don't rush this enough for everybody. All right, don't rush now. Don't rush. Those who suffer from ad indigestion, gas, sour stomach, cramps, sciatica, lumbago, rheumatism, gout, swollen joints, mumps, dandruff, fallen arches, or if any of your family or livestock are sick, Universal Elixir will cure them. I don't care what the matter is. One bottle will put new life and vigor into those old bodies of yours. To me, two bottles. Two bottles sold to Methuselah. No, Dippy. I'm sorry, sir. Only one bottle of this precious elixir to a person. Now, folks, time's up. Say, give me a bottle. All right, folks, always willing to be right with you. Say, uh, I've already bought that bottle. I had my money out and everything. I'm sorry, neighbor, but the bell just rang. But he passed me up. I had my money out. I came on papers to get a bottle of medicine. Come on, Doc, let me have a bottle. I'm sorry, folks. But if I let that man have a bottle after the bell rang, everybody will want one. Sure. Wow. Wow. Brothers, you're making it tough on me. The only bottles I have left are those set aside for our next town, Centerville. Centerville? Let me have a word with the good doctor. It's a sellout, Doc. We can peddle all we got. The doctor has agreed to my suggestion. And to show you our hearts are in the right place, Joe. Yes, sir. Break out that lot for Centerville and start selling again. Okay. I don't want to leave your town with any hard feelings. Don't rush. There'll be elixir for all. And remember, a dollar spent now means hundreds saved later. Don't miss this wonderful opportunity. You'll never regret it. You'll never miss the money. What is money compared to health? Hey, give me another bottle. Sam, you bought five bottles already. Ah, Duke, I've been thinking perchance we should invade the metropolis. No, Doc. They've forgotten more tricks than we'll ever learn. Doing all right as we are, aren't we? Ah, yes, indeed. That vision of prophecy was mine when we encountered each other only a short year or so ago. Ah, how time has flown on golden wings. And tonight, we have reached the pinnacle of our success. That's a good line, you sling, Doc. Station WEDK, New York City, now brings you your nightly hot shots from the hot spot by your spotter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a spotter with a spot of news. Hottest hot spot, 30 Fenton Century Club, has cooled off after the first presentation of a new review featuring the erstwhile bronze nightingale, Ethel Andrews, who still wobbles a swell pair of pipes, but is nixed when it comes to filling the heavy spot in the Broadway biggie. Some of the blame, or maybe all of it, pins on Fenton, for trying to rush a gal from sticks to steeples in a few weeks. And one marshal who authorized this one should be forced to eat raw the egg. Look, Mr. Fenton, I can dope this show. Not on my money. I must have been doped when I let you talk me into it. That girl's a specialty, not a star. Well, why not go back to her first setup? Remember when you first saw her in Philadelphia? Fill her as a single. Remember her rave notices? Remember the variety? Yes, I remember. And I'm thinking about what variety it'll do to me now. As a producer, Marshal, you're a good agent. Back to the sticks. I'm through. From pinnacle to pit, the bottomless pit, that's me. Don Durando's wonderful discovery is headed for a drain pipe instead of strain tripe. And all because of that devilish device, that broadcasting apparatus. Well, I have a mind to bust that. You understand, Doc, don't you? Say, do. Can I drive you down to the station? No, Dippy, thanks. I'd rather walk. I want to be by myself. Well, so long, fellas.
So that does mean something to you. Where are we heading, honey? South? No. We're moving to another apartment. We can't afford all this now. A fortune teller told me once that I was a, a cyclist. A what? Somebody who can see things that some people can't. Oh, you mean a psychic. That's it, a cyclist. Well, I've been having notions about somebody down south. And I'm trying to forget the south. You're kidding yourself, honey. Anyway, Duke's down there, and I've got a hunch he's in trouble. Maybe he's broke. Not much. You're forgetting a little matter of $5,000 he sold me for. Now, you listen to me. I've been hiding a lie, and it's time somebody came clean. If Duke won't, I will. And I don't want to hear anything about You're it. You're going to hear what I've got to say, and it's all about him. Duke Davis double-crossed himself for you. He wrote that $5,000 check and didn't take a dime from Marshall. He thought he was standing in your way. Alice, we're not moving. We're sending the trunk to Pennsylvania Station. We're heading south. There's the baggage smasher. Gosh, maybe I am a cyclist. We were just talking about you. Well, am I invited in? Duke. Duke, I just found out what you did for me. And I just found out what they did to you. All I want is 15 minutes with that Fenton fellow. Forget him, Duke. You can't hurt him. It wasn't his fault. Hurt him? I'm going to do him good. And you're going to wow him at that Century Club. Nothing can stop us now. And here's another bit of news from a local hot spot. Ferdy Fenton, whose last Century Club show went sour on him, wasted no time in calling in a doctor, one Duke Davis, a newcomer from the sticks. The medicine is said to be new faces, novel ideas, and... Well, Ferdy, you're either a genius or a glutton for punishment. Anyway, good luck with your new producer. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce the return to your thriving community of this famous attraction featuring the bronze nightingale. On the inside, folks, on the inside, a sight of a lifetime, guaranteed satisfaction or your money cheerfully refunded. Come one, come all, come big, come small. The big show, the free show. The little ladies will pass among you with harmony and dances. They will do you so much good. <laughs> The tune you can sing, there's a song in everything. Harlem is harmony. Harlem is living good. Don't have to knock on wood when you seem to be wrong. Find the friendship in a song. Harlem is harmony. Have you got a little heart or an old banjo? You can strum a little, hum a little as you go. Have you got a little love? You can spread around. When my gal looks at me, gets my hallelujah key. Harlem is harmony. Harlem is harmony. Harlem is harmony. Harlem is harmony.